Yes, good morning and welcome to EAL's latest webinar on the Key Stage 4 and Key Stage 5 qualifications for inclusion in the 2017 performance tables. What we'll be looking at this morning then is what are the four types of school qualifications that the DfE recognise? What new Key Stage 4 and Key Stage 5 qualifications have EAL developed? What Key Stage 4 and Key Stage 5 qualifications are included in the 2017 performance tables? What is the difference about the qualifications included in the 2017 performance tables? How are the qualifications graded? We're going to be looking at the assessment of the qualifications and also the quality assurance of the qualifications. So here are the four qualification categories that the DfE recognise. We have there in the top left hand corner the Tech Awards. These are qualifications at level 1 and 2 in which EAL have already developed. And they're broad based subjects uh, which equip learners with practical skills and also transferable skills. They're usually on par with one GCSE. We have the tech certificates there, qualifications at level two. These are included on the key stage five performance tables. And they use the qualifications developed around specific occupations. We then have the tech levels, qualifications at level three on key stage five. Again, these are specific qualifications which would give entry to employment or apprenticeship or even progression to a higher education course. And the fourth category which Yale have not developed qualifications in is the applied general qualifications. These are again at level three and they usually qualify broad vocational qualifications which give entry to a range of higher education courses. So what key stage four qualifications are included in the 2017 performance tables then? Well EL have developed a new qualification, the Level 1 Foundation Certificate in Engineering Technology. It has one monetary core unit, which is an online exam, and 22 optional units which in which the learner would choose three of them. We've also developed the first certificate in engineering technology. This went live in September 2013. Again, it's got three monetary core units and one optional unit within it. And also the first diploma, three monetary core units with three optional units in it. All three qualifications are graded. We should be looking at, at that a little bit later on. And they all have synoptic assessments. Now, all three qualifications do include bespoke synoptic assessments according to employer or local needs, which are validated by EAL. So on the key stage five qualifications, then, we've developed a number of qualifications here. The EAL Level 3 Advanced Diploma in Engineering Technology. It's got two monetary units and four, the learner chooses four optional units within a choice of seven pathways. Now those seven pathways include such like mechanical engineering, maintenance, fab and weld, electrical engineering, etc. Again, the synoptic assessment around this is bespoke according to the employer or local needs. We've also developed a level two intermediate diploma in electrical installation. This has five monetary units within it and a synoptic assessment which is developed by EAL and marked by the centre. We've also developed the Level 3 Advanced Diploma in Electrical Installation. This has six monetary units plus one optional unit. Again, EAL have developed the synoptic assessment, which is marked by the centre. In plumbing, we have the Level 2 Intermediate Diploma in Plumbing, which consists of nine monetary units 
and a synoptic assessment which is developed by EAL and marked by the centre. And the level three advanced diploma in plumbing, which consists of six monitor units and a synoptic assessment again, which is developed by EAL and marked by the centre. Now, the good news here is that all qualifications will not require any changes in the next curriculum year as they meet all of DfE's requirements. This may not be the case with other AO, AOs who may have to change their qualifications in order to meet the DfE characteristics. Behind these qualifications too, we will have new interactive materials. So what is the difference then about the qualifications included in the 2017 performance tables? Looking here specifically now at the key stage five qualifications, they must meet the 10 DFE characteristics. And the one I've highlighted in green there really is the main one for centres to be aware of, which is employer involvement. DFE have stipulated that employers must be involved in the qualification. They have given guidance around what that involvement could be, including work experience or the employer involved in the delivery of the assessment or delivery of the curriculum. There are a number of stipulations which uh, DFE have said will be okay for centres to use. We have put all these within our qualification manual. So how are the qualifications graded then? Well, we use the marks from the online exams and they're added together and divided by the total number to get a mean score. This is then expressed as a percentage. The mark from the synoptic assessment is then expressed as a percentage. And then the sum of the two percentages above are divided by two to give an overall percentage score. And the final percentage score is then rounded up to the nearest whole number and converted into an overall grade the qualification and you can see there there's three grade categories pass between 50 and 64 percent merit between 65 and 79 percent and distinction 80 percent plus now here's an example from the level three advanced diploma in engineering technology outlined below here so the learner would take the online exam netp001 and they achieve a mark of 62. They would then take the other monetary unit, NETA001, and they achieve a mark of 64%. These two are added together and divided by two because there's two online exams here to give 63. They then take the synoptic assessment. The then achieves a mark of 69 in their expressed percentage. These two marks then are added together and divided by two. And as you can see here, the learner would achieve 66, which equates to a merit grade. So how are the qualifications assessed then? All the on-screen on examinations, these the, the, the examinations set by EAL and marked by EAL will be invigilated by the centers and we shall externally verify and moderate the test results and spot check. The assignments or the practical tasks, these are all set by EAL, but marked by the center. These will not be graded, but be, will be a pass refer mark. It goes without saying that the learner will have to pass all assignments, practical tests, on-screen exams and final synoptic assessments to achieve their qualification. So with these assignments and practical tests, um, internal standardization within the center and external verification and continuous monitoring via EQA visits. The final synoptic assessment, it could be set by EAL or it could be set by the center uh, the centre would set it uh, according to employer or local needs. EAL would then validate 
the center's final synoptic assessment. Now, internally within that center, we'd expect standardization, but we'd also expect a moderation of learner marks. And externally, we would verify those final marks. So looking now at the quality assurance of the qualifications, with the on-screen examinations, they're set by AL, marked by AL. Uh, they're internally invigilated and moderated by ourselves. But specifically looking then at the synoptic assessments here, the synoptic assessment must be completed within the last third of the program. Internal moderation must be undertaken once learners have completed the synoptic assessment. And internal moderation must be based on a sample of at least 25% or 100% if fewer than five learners. And that concludes our webinar session this morning. Just want to open up now for questions. Thank you for listening. OK, well, thank you very much this morning. OK, the qualification, uh, sorry, the question here from Kelly is, are the qualifications funded through SFA? The answer to that, Kelly, is yes. Any qualification on the DFE performance tables will be funded through the SFA. A uh, question from Gillian here, is level one classroom only? Yes, it's a mixture, Gillian, really, of classroom and workshop. We do have the applied learning through practical as well in it. It's the same as level two, really, both uh, uh, classroom and workshop as well. Question from Kelly here, are schools recognising these as equivalent GCSEs? Kelly, yes, uh, the Key Stage 4 qualifications are on par with GCSEs and the Key Stage 5 qualifications are on par with A-levels. Uh, you, you've noticed that DFE now have, have included eight characteristics that the Key Stage 4 qualifications must meet and ten at, for Key Stage 5. They've made the, the qualifications more rigorous uh, and they've made them on par with GCSE and A-levels. Yes, so they will be recognised. Thank you this morning. I think that's all the questions come through now. Uh, do contact me with any more questions should any arise. Have a great day.